Hey everybody and welcome to the N Channel video blog. And today what I want to talk about is Thevenin's Theorem. What Thevenin's Theorem is, is, is basically a simple load analysis, which allows us to take a little bit more than a complex circuit and simplify it into something that has no thought process at all, so we can quickly analyze it to actually find out what's happening at our load. And that's the main point of this, is just a load analysis. So like I said, it allows us to take a very complex circuit. I know this one is not overly complex, but it just represents what we can do here. And turn it into this really simple circuit right here, which is basically a series voltage source with a series resistance and going right to the load. So basically what this allows us to do is quickly analyze what happens if we change the load as the voltage source and the resistance is a reflection of what will be seen right at this node. So let's get more into it and actually determine how to calculate this equivalent circuit for something as basic as this. In order to use this tool to actually determine what's happening at our load, we have to determine two constants in the circuit, and they are called Thevenin's voltage and Thevenin's resistance. So let's actually go in and figure out how to calculate these. And once we have those values, it's going to be really easy to determine what's occurring at RL. So in order to determine the, uh, the Thevenin's voltage, what we have to do is find what's happening at this node right here. So what Thevenin's theorem tells us to do is to remove the actual load from the circuit, so actually break away it, and just measure it right there. And so what we're going to do right now is analyze the rest of the circuit to determine what's occurring actually at this node. So what we're going to start off by doing is starting off with the first resistance values. And as you can see here, R1 and R2 are in parallel. And in order to simplify it, what we're going to do is take them in parallel to reduce it to a series resistance. And I'm going to call that product Rx. So R1 and R2 in parallel, and we take our parallel resistance law, and we solve it to find out that 2 kilo ohms in parallel with 2 kilo ohms will be half of the actual original kilo ohm value of one resistor. So that's why we have a 1 kilo ohm value there. So from there we can simplify the circuit by saying that this is now equal to 1 kilo ohm. And now when we take 1 kilo ohm plus 1 kilo ohm in a series with 2 kilo ohms, because you've got to remember that the RL has actually been removed from the circuit, so you can actually just analyze it at a certain point. Now we have a really nice voltage divider, because the added sum of these two will be 2 kilo ohms, and this one will be 2 kilo ohms. So the voltage at the node will be the actual Thevenin's voltage at the circuit that we're going to simplify it into. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our voltage input from here and times it in a voltage divider way. So we take our R4 value, which is 2 kilo ohms, and our Rx, which is the product of R1 and R2, and then plus it R3, which we determined is already 2 kilo ohms, plus R4, which is 2 kilo ohms. So that gives us a really nice number to work with, and I know this is a really simplified version, and it probably won't occur like this when you're actually doing your own analysis, but what this does is tells us that our 2 volts source is going to be using our voltage divider to determine that 2 divided by 4 is half, so half the voltage will be seen at the actual node, which our Thevenin's voltage is therefore 1 volt. Now what Thevenin's theorem states now is with our RL still removed from the circuit in order to calculate our Thevenin's, what we must do is remove all voltage and current sources. So what we actually do is just break away the connection and completely isolate it by putting in a short in between where the voltage source would have been. And what we're going to do from there is analyze what's occurring in the circuit. So what I've done here is just simplify the drawing into what it actually is. So at this node junction here, it is exactly the same as this one here. It's just measuring what would be observed. So we can still use Rx from our previous calculation when we're calculating the voltage at uh, the voltage for the Thevenin circuit, equivalent circuit, I should say. And so basically, what that means is we have one kilo ohm plus one kilo ohm in series. So I'm going to call that product Ry. So when we take Rx plus R3, we're going to find out that it's actually equal to 2 kilo ohms. So our Thevenin's resistance is going to be equal to Ry in parallel to R4. And what we determine is that once again we have 2 kilo ohms in parallel with 2 kilo ohms. So it's half of one resistance value, if they're perf uh, perfectly the same. 
So that means that the R7 and its 4 equivalent circuit is going to be really dumbed down to 1 kilo ohm. So let's put all our values in and see what our equivalent circuit looks like. So now we've actually done all the calculations and we know our Thevenin's voltage and our Thevenin's resistance, we can actually plug them into the circuit. So what Thevenin's theorem states is that any circuit that's linear can be interpreted as a series voltage source, a series resistance, and series with the actual load of the circuit. So our Thevenin's voltage is 1 volt, our Thevenin's resistance is 1 kilo ohm, and our RL is 2 kilo ohms. So let's actually take the measurements and actually determine what's occurring in our circuit. So that way that we can actually prove that this is equivalent to this. Because if we do a quick voltage divider, we should determine that we get 6.67 volts at the actual RL. But let's prove it to ourselves. Now this is our Thevenin's equivalent circuit. We have our Thevenin's resistance, which is 1 kilo ohms, which is the resistor on the far left. And we have our RL, which is our actual resistor of the load. Now I actually set up the voltage using the oscilloscope. So even though it says 0.9 going into the circuit, it's actually 1 volt. As you can see here, on our actual oscilloscope, this is the reading across RL. And we get 656 millivolts for our actual reading for our just voltage. And it's to be expected as it's not ideal in some of the components and stuff like that. So some of the tolerances can accumulate that. But as you can see, it's fairly accurate to our calculations. Now this is the actual circuit that we based our Thevenin circuit on. So as you can see here, it's five resistors. And the one on the far top right is actually RL. Now once again, I set up the actual voltage of this using the oscilloscope. So even though it says 1.9 volts, it's actually 2 volts exactly. And as you can see here, on the actual reading over RL, we get 680 millivolts, which is once again can be accommodated for our actual resistor values and some of the tolerance that exists within them. So this gives us an actual real analysis of how the circuit is performing, and it actually determines that our R7 and circuit is extremely accurate to what we did. Hey everybody, well thanks for watching and hopefully this is pointing out how awesome Thevenin's theorem can be in actually applying its circuits for load analysis. Because now you can really take a simple circuit and modify it very easily to, in order to see what's going to happen at your actual load if you do a load change. So it's really a neat tool that allows you to really quickly analyze what's going on. So once again,